Sandy. How are you today? Welcome to Your Real, Your Ideal podcast. Everyone, we are here. We are back this week. Um, I am doing great. We're afternoon. Actually, we're taping in the afternoon, which is noise our case. And I know we're usually in the morning drinking our coffee, but not today. Yeah, I texted Amy and said, I'm pouring the wine. She said, okay, so am I. Okay, so, me too. Everyone. Cheers. <laughs> and look, I have my Kansas City heart. Go for the Chiefs. Go Chiefs. I know. I'm so excited. I actually bought those when I went to the parade last year. So I, I'm happy they're in the Super Bowl. If we have if you know me, I love, I love the it. Chiefs. I love yeah. it. If we, if we do well for time, if we have time at the end, a little football talk. So okay. Something. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to be time management, Amy, organization. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try to hit 30 minutes today. So that's our goal. I mean, we've been doing really better. We've been doing drastically better than we were at the beginning because we were very chatty when we first started the podcast. And we have really tend to sit down and I'm very optimistic today about the length of our podcast <laughs> because we read the book and we know optimism baby I know we read this book chasing the bright side which is such a lovely book I want to thank you for mentioning this it's by Jess Ekstrom and she founded Headbands for Hope at and when she was in college is when she started the journey of creating it and it's a, uh, I actually went to their website to see their products because they have headbands, they have hats, they have everything. And for every one they sell, they donate to children with cancer, which, so it's kind of like that Tom's model where you buy a pair, you donate a pair, and then the socks, isn't it socks that, um, uh, Bombas, Bomba, yep, this, Bombas. yep, they do the same thing where you buy a pair. So it's that model, but it's the headbands. And what I loved about the headbands was um, it wasn't encouraging the kids that have to shave their heads to hide their head. It was more to celebrate it yes. and bring attention to it and make it look beautiful or help it look beautiful. That was, so anyway, that was her inspiration. And she learned a lot along the way um, where I, the book, I, had some history with guests when I say history um, through some form of social media it popped up that she was going to give a class on um, speaking and I wanted to change my content of my public speaking from being business oriented to some other passion projects that I have and I thought you know what I'm going to I need to spend some more time on this and just through headbands of hope and what she did and even things through the book, she does the circuit speaking all year round. So I did a class with her and I loved her. She is just, you know, for our listeners, find her on Instagram. She is the cutest thing. I love her attitude. She and her husband travel the United States in an Airstream with their doodle dog. Um, I love that. And she has a great attitude. She doesn't take herself too seriously. Um, and then since then, well, that was when I was in Boise. Um, she actually did a pop up on book writing after she wrote this book. Uh, and I usually do a lot of um, what do I want to say more blogs or fiction type things. And I thought I for some of the endeavors I have that are nonfiction, I'd like to get some of her feedback. And she was marvelous in that too. So just a couple of things. If you go to her website for just Jess Ekstrom, you'll see she does things for virtual events, um, speaking, and writing books. So she has other resources. And my feedback is I have enjoyed her because it's very practical. It's very much her journey, what she learned. And then she gives a lot of great feedback in uh, who to partner with for technology, how publishing oh, works. Nice. Yeah, she gives, she's very, very, um, uh, she's very, very gracious in all the extras that she gives to you rather than starting from scratch. So, um, nice. yeah, nice. I mean, she did do this book launch. I agreed to be one of her uh, followers. You know, she, it's really a great thing when you do a book, you try to get people that will try to promote it, read it for you. And uh, she did send me a headband from her headbands of hope, which was really cute because it was the same as the book cover. And oh, how fun. <laughs> yeah, so I do have a headband from headbands of hope. It's very cute. Very good. I love that. But so, I genuinely love the book. I genuinely I thought it was a great yeah. read. It was a 
quick read. I like stories. I like quotes, mm -hmm. um, things that resonate that I can uh, compare to myself where it's not all philosophical or non-direct. But in general, I love the book. I, you know, I think I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And That's Amy, pretty good. what did you think? It, and you know what? It's funny because you asked that the other night because we also had a book club, a book club about right. that. And you asked what we would rate it. And it was funny because my answer was, well, it depends on who I'm talking to. You know, some people I would tell them they won't like it. Other people I would recommend it. I think you maybe asked if I would recommend it. And um, it was kind of funny. You called me on it. You're like, well, what about for yourself? And I was like, okay, good you question. Should, about it. Yes, I would recommend it for myself. And um, I, I thought it was great she really shared some big hurdles that happened early on and she kept chugging along and resiliency was a huge part of this book of sharing her journey like it's not like she's uh, someone who uh, it just all came easily for her there were some big things and you know that involved other people you know i think of the her uh, borrowing from her dad mm -hmm. the $10,000 and um, losing it, uh, you know, at the very beginning. I'm like, oh my gosh, I probably would have stepped away. That's it. Done. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, but that's big. And she said, and I think this is so true. So using that as an example, and I don't know if I'll find it right away in the book, but basically you, you have to fail to win, right? To succeed. And yeah. how the failures early on that you can just give up, but it's the failures that will help you learn the next time and negotiate a deal and get a signed contract. I mean, we've all made those lessons and I'm just going to throw in right now because it's timely. Like my millennial children and uh, Robin Hood and buying game stops stock you know you learn when you put money into something you don't understand and how that works and <laughs> forward on it again back to timeliness but <laughs> but you have to fail we talk about that a lot in this podcast but uh, failing helps you succeed if you keep forging forward and you learn from that failure the most successful people will, will tell you all the stories of their failures that help get them to success. Yes. Yes. And if, if you don't fail, you don't learn. Right. It's like you, and part of that could, like, if you're just really lucky and you never have a failure, which I don't know of anybody who's never had a failure. So if, I don't know that that really exists. <laughs> it's calling lying to others or yourself. It's one. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's true. Good point. And, and, you know, the other thing I think that was great about her is here's this young girl and I, who, you know, I can't remember. Did she have a business degree? I don't remember her degree, no. but no, but no practical experience. And I can't imagine what the traditional banks and back to she borrowed money from her dad and then of all things she found somebody to lend her money and it goes astray you could she talks a lot about how you create your own narrative and what the voices in your head tell you and she would have all the voices saying what why do you think you're doing this you don't have the background for this you don't have the training for this and how you, part of optimism is getting past the voices in your head to create the narrative that you want it to be. And I think there's so much truth to that, that, and sometimes those stories just keep festering and festering and festering until you have this nightmare going on in your head that's not doing anything. And creating- you know, there, was, um, there was a story about her going up and speaking with a group of people. And I don't remember exactly what the story was, but she was super young. And um, so one of the a corporation that hired her, I think, I don't yeah, remember. And there were probably six or seven people on the panel and she was one of them. And the gentleman said, one of the guys said something to her, an older gentleman. And he like really, he, he devalued her being there before they even got on the stage. But she was able to flip it around and 
to say, I'm here. I got this. There's a reason they invited me. So it was, it was a very, because those voices in the head, that can really bring you down. But the other piece of this is she got to a point where she was very celebrated and doing magazine covers and being interviewed for these big things. And I worked a sentence here that resonated with me because she said, um, hold on. She said, I have to check in and ask myself this question. The thing that I'm chasing right now, if I got it and no one else knew it, would it still be meaningful to me? Amy, I have that mark too, right? Here, <laughs> page 179. <laughs> yeah, that is so funny. The thing that I'm chasing right now, if I love that, because it's back to you chase, back to chasing the bright side. Is it your bright side? Is it what you want or is it what somebody wants for you? And what right. a great way to think about it. If nobody knew, you know, would it be meaningful? Would it bring me happiness? Is it what I want? Right. Or am I just trying to make myself look better for other people, right. you know, so they'll be impressed. So, or it was really, uh, it just resonated a lot with me, of, you know, check, just check yourself. I'm looking back. It was actually, she, uh, one of her, uh, one of the kids that, um, were, was part of headbands for hope passed away, you know, so she has to deal with death. And it really, you know, things like that will make you think, what am I chasing and why am I doing it? And back to her core purpose, this was, wasn't it volunteer work in college that she noticed, you know, the kids and back to celebrating rather than trying to cover it up and hide it. And the first time she did a headband, how joyous the child was to have that and proud. And that's where it all came from. So, I mean, back to, you know, she talks about purpose in here too, but this, this ties right in purpose is chasing something that's meaningful to you, but is also impactful to other people. Right. 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 Yeah. And she, I like the way she wove the stories of the people she was giving the headbands to throughout the whole book because it felt like that was her centering moment. And, you know, no matter, because it felt like no matter how successful the business got and how big it got, she continued to deliver headbands mm-hmm. and have that interaction with the kids getting them because that's why she was doing it. That was her whole purpose, like you said, right? and kept her centered. And she could have just, not done that she could have just been on the speaking circuit and the you know having the groups writing the book and she could have let somebody else be doing that right right no when she talked about purpose I like that too because she went back to the formal definition think about purpose if anything what's the purpose of my microphone so I can sound better when I do my podcast what's the purpose of the light and she said the core definition of purpose Purpose at its core is the reason for which something is done or created for which something exists. That's a pretty simplistic, you know, we get way out there, you know, purpose is this huge win the Nobel prize, blah, blah, blah. But the purpose is really the meaning. So if it's the purpose of me, right. If it's the purpose of you, why do you exist? And that is back to her point on chasing something you're chasing something that's meaningful for you that, that no matter what, it's going to be meaningful to you, right? Your value. And it's, then there's a, the flip side is it brings value or joy to others, which her example is a perfect example of purpose, whether it was on the small scale or the big scale. If she did this and she, it did, she didn't make it into a business, but she went every day and she gave one headband a week and flew below radar she nailed her purpose without having all the hoopla and people magazine and everything that went with it. You don't have to have the hoopla. Right. That's true. She could have just been sewing headbands for herself and been completely felt like she had found her purpose. Purpose doesn't have to be about what, how big it is to everyone around you. Yeah. Purpose is the human connection of what you've given. Heck, 
Purpose could be, you know, quietly saving the environment because you feel passionate about it and you're really good at it. And you made a difference for years to come in how you did that. But that doesn't mean that you are going to get, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize for doing that, or you're going to be on the cover of Time Magazine. Yeah, because nobody may ever know. Nobody may ever know. It could be a total secret. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was another piece here about uh, that I really liked about optimism and it, this it, this sentence right here is page 191 in my book it's optimism is taking all of our experiences and choosing to write a good story okay um and she said, I caught this sentence and I was like, isn't that interesting? Because you take the whole, your whole past and you write a good story about it. And she said, I laugh because none of it was in the plans. Like if she looked back in the past 10 years and she talks about her uncles to headbands for hope, none of it was in her plans. There was nothing Which that is she most said like right. as a young adult, I'm planning on, this is my story. It was her, the experiences became her story and she chose that to be her story. And I think part of optimism also is being optimistic about your past experiences and uh, it doesn't have to be sugar coating, but pulling out of them the good or yeah. the lessons learned rather than holding grudges. Totally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being in the gutter, thinking obsessing over the negative her one of her first quotes and again back to the listeners if you have read this book write in the comments or tell us what you thought or anything that resonated with you for those who haven't read the book it is a quick read and there's a she starts every chapter with a quote and this one was it was for chapter two we can't always control our experiences but we can always write our story which goes back to innately we can control our words and our actions and how we respond, how we pivot, how we're going to navigate going forward and even reconstructing, not lying, but upon our reflection, our narrative is going to be the story we hold in our minds and our hearts on how we're going to use that going forward. Right. Even if somebody writes a story differently. Right. And if you write a bad story about yourself, so you could say, oh my gosh, I lost all my dad's money. I am such a failure. I'm like, you could go, you could spiral downward or you can move up. Like you can move forward and step up and um, she took responsibility, but she kept moving forward at which was, and she didn't let that keep replaying in her mind. And we get back and I, you know, the big word to me is intentional. And so optimism sometimes can be a over glorified word because people, oh, I want to be happy. I'm optimistic, but optimism is a choice and optimism is work too, because we live in, we're human and we live in a world that it's not always easy to be optimistic, but it's an intentional action that leads to positive results. Right. So, so intentionality. I'm going to give you the definition of optimism. Okay. Because I pulled Love it up before okay. as we were starting because I'm like huh I'm interested in this um it's hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something so what I what I realized in this is it's looking towards the future you're optimistic about what's going to happen and knowing that our stories may change and we have something in our head and a plan, but being able to navigate to the pivots and the detours that happen in the story with a positive attitude. Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, there's a few questions. So I, I went to that definition and it was about the future, but um, one of the things that a question is, is optimism more useful than positive thinking? That's is it the same thing? I don't think it's the same thing. After looking at this, I don't think it's the same thing because positive thinking 
is almost looking backwards or in the moment or in the moment and optimism is going looking at the future it's looking at the future but deploying pos- a positive attitude right? So maybe it interjects both. But yeah, I agree with you. I think positive attitude, it's, it's two different things, but they're both great things. And you can deploy positive attitude with your optimism, but positive attitude is more in the moment. And optimism is how we're mapping out our future and looking at the future and moving forward. Yeah. And then I also wonder, is resiliency tied to optimism? You know what? Because if you're a lot in our book club, you know, back to our book club discussion, that was probably the number one word that came up. Perseverance and resilience were the two words that came up to go with optimism. Yeah. Because if you're a pessimist about the future, then are you, um, you know, are you, will you be as resilient? Will you be, will you persevere if you don't think there's a lot of hope? in the future, because I think optimism is very closely tied to hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think hope is a beautiful thing. (laughs) Thought it was interesting. I'm just looking at my notes from, from what, what, what people I I had asked what they got out of the book or what their takeaway was. And um, you talked about perseverance and hurdles, which you just talked about now, but somebody else talked about shortening, shortening their bounce back time which is, that's another way to look at optimism because rather than not being able to rally to move, inability to move on. And even though that wasn't, for me, that resonated with her journey and a hurdle she has, right? Right. Another one was about mistakes and dealing with mistakes. Um, Mine was lead with optimism, proceed with caution. Um, But (laughs) back to a good book, everybody got a little bit different out of it, but perseverance and resilience were uh, a common theme. Well, I think her story modeled a lot of perseverance Mm -hmm. and resiliency. Like, I think that's, that's why it resonated a lot with me. Right. Right. Yeah, it was pretty good. All right. So what's the real and the ideal in this? The real is you, you, there's a future ahead of you as far as we all know, and we have to act on it. And part of that sometimes can be inaction, but you, the real is there is a future, there is a mapping and you have an attitude that's going to guide that. And the ideal is, and this is my take, is you can choose how positive you're going to be about that. If you're going to put optimism into it, if you're going to use the self-reflection of your past to persevere and have the best outcome in the future, knowing that it's going to be being ready for changes sometimes daily away from the plan, but using that optimism as a guiding light. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question for you, Sandy, because you and I, we are positive thinkers. We're optimists. We like we started this podcast and we didn't go down the hole of, oh, what could go wrong? <laughs> we were just okay, like, let's do okay, it. Let's we're hopeful, we're optimistic. We'll see how it goes. Yes. Right. Okay, so I'm wondering if people who are more pessimistic, number one, if they would like the book. And then number two, if they can become optimistic, like sometimes I think pessimists, people who are pessimistic, um, I, I don't want to say they're born that way, but that they've been like that their whole life. So maybe they are born that way. I don't know. What do you think? Can you become, can you train your brain to be more optimistic? I think that there isn't a black and white, like that's, even though we know people, we say they're pessimistic, I, you know, but she's overly optimistic. I'm like, I think I'm realistic too, because I'm pretty practical, yeah. but I think there's different levels of, a, there's a baseline innately. So I'll go back to, rather than saying pessimist versus optimist, some people have a lower baseline. I believe, and I'd love their feedback. If you're somebody with a lower baseline or have been told you're pessimistic, whether the book resonated with them, because to me, we're all going to the same place, 
they're just at a lower level and maybe at a slower speed, right? For yeah. to get to the, so I, I think they can get the same out of it. It's just a different, um, it's a different roadmap. Yeah. I like the different baseline because I, I, it makes me go back to your um, rating the days. Yeah, the happiness factor. The happiness factor, yes. And, and your number and how your number is, your baseline is higher than and like yours, right? Mm -hmm. Like and he you hates being called a pessimist. And he hates being called, you know, oh, you're a Debbie Downer. It's like, just like, so I don't like to be called a Pollyanna and unrealistic, right? Do you, yeah. it, and right. completely na different natural. I mean, it's good for us to accept that we have a higher baseline uh -huh. because it makes me be more real in situations to say, you're always going to find the best in the per. It, it brings me back to reality to understand that I am at a higher baseline. It's a good, a good self-awareness. I agree. I am always trying to catch myself to make sure I'm not being too Pollyanna. Because I, I mean, that's like too, I don't want to say I'm being too optimistic. I, there is a reality check that has to happen sometimes, especially, you know, mm -hmm. well, just, oh, just I'd say with anything, there's that, right. you got to have a reality check. Right. All right. Well, great discussion about the book. Now, our wrap question is ha, okay so the reason this is the rap question she talks about taking an improv class at some point in this book and we were talking about this in the book club about the um you know saying yes and because and she said that was one of the most beneficial things she had ever done because it made you acknowledge somebody agree with them and build on it so it was yes, this happened. And so yes, something bad may have happened and I just keep on going. And so that was one of her um, things that she pointed out. So have you ever taken an acting or improv class? I never have, but, oh, I'm supposed to say and, and, yes. uh, <laughs> no, and, and. <laughs> when I lived in, when we lived in Boise, uh, we went to an improv and, uh, Bill, my cousin, and I got pulled up onto stage to be part of the improv team. Oh, fun. And I found it very electrifying. And so they would they would ask the audience to throw something in and then we'd all start improving on it. So I've had no training, but I'm very intrigued and I think it would be a ton of fun. And Bill actually graduated from improv school like Second City or something in Hollywood. So, you know, he's and he said it was great. Um, so how about you? Uh, I'm very interested. I've, it kind of falls with ballroom dancing. I, I <laughs> Okay. So I have done the ballroom dancing classes and that's okay. a very fun. I, I don't know that we did. We did like salsa and stuff like that. So I don't know if you call it ballroom, but it was a very fun. We did do that. Um, never done an improv, but I was very intrigued too. I was like, boy, that would be a fun exercise or, you know, to do, um, did you ever do drama in high school or anything like that? I did, but it was a very small high school and I was the lead to the fall play, but they chose me because the, 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 the drama teacher thought I looked like the part of a school teacher. Oh yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you know, it was like my one time, otherwise I was always in the sidelines and singing. So nothing, I, I always yeah. enjoyed drama, but it was nothing um, high scale. How about that? Yeah, I'm the same way. It was, it's fun. It was an activity, like but yeah. never had an aspiration to be on the stage, like for real. <laughs> None of my kids did it. They were, they were more sports or intramurals or, uh, yeah. you know, they, but they never, none, none of them ever did, uh, any type of a drama and had my, a my son is doing it right now. And my girls did a little bit one of my girls was a stage manager and I'm like, oh, that's like my, that's where I would like be. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> I'd like to be director. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'd be a director or writing the screenplay. Those would be probably my roles. I'm not really good at acting. I'm just not really good at it. Improv is different because it's like talking or what I want to say being clever and coming up with something and it's a group thing, which is fun, but like just reciting lines, I'm not very believable. Um, I can't, I have a hard time being somebody that's not a natural thing for me. So 
And I would say we're pretty good at improv because that's what we do this whole <laughs> podcast. Right, right. We just, yes, and. <laughs> All right. So I think we are good today. How do we Perfect. do on time? Looks like we're good. I mean, if it's, if it's 30, it's just a hair after. So I think we're good. And I'm going to, I'm going to, here's what that whole football story. We'll save that till after the Super Bowl. Oh, good. And I'm just okay. going to say go Chiefs. I'm go super Chiefs. excited. I hope they have a good game. I just hope they play well. It's always fun to watch them. I don't, I, I will, I will enjoy the matchup. There's a lot yeah. of players on both sides that I really like for a lot of reasons, but we'll save that for the next conversation. So right. go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Bye, Amy. Bye, Sandy.